Oh, what? Oh, hey, Cherubs. What were we talking about? Right, mental status screening tests. These are some of the tests that I use at work. Now, first of all, these are all screening tests. If you want to have a better diagnostic test, you can refer a patient to neuropsychology for a thorough battery of exams. But I'm told that this doesn't reimburse well, and it takes two and a half hours. And come on, we all have better things to do with our time. Baby shark do 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 do. Baby shark do 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 do. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to assume that you've heard of and administered at least a few of these before. So with that out of the way, which one of these tests is the best? So whenever I ask a question like that, you should ask, in what regard? This would be like if I asked you, which is better, a fork or a spoon? Well, it depends on what you're eating. Wait, hold on, one sec. Hello? Oh, hi. Yeah, well, of course. No, 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 it, it was just a joke. Yeah, bad taste, I know. I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I love you too. <sighs> I've been reminded by my mother that the answer to the previous question is always chopsticks. These are all tools in your toolkit. Each tool has its own strengths and weaknesses. The tool that you use will depend on the situation, so uh, don't use a spoon when you want to shop. <sighs> I've been reminded by my mother that the answer is still chopsticks. The mini cocks, lums, and mocha are all free, and that's great. The best things in life are free, which is why I still live with my mother. The mini cock is quick to administer, which is great if you're busy. Because it's pretty simple, a lot of providers don't even need to print out the form. I still print them out, because, you know, sometimes I need a reminder of what a clock looks like, and this is really helpful. The nice thing about the MMSC is that it's old. This means that you can go up to pretty much any healthcare professional and say, Dr. Uechi's MMSC score was a 10 out of 30, and they'll know that I'm so bright my mother calls me Sunny. The slums and the mocha are relatively difficult tests. Sometimes difficult is what you want. If you're having trouble distinguishing whether a patient really has dementia, then you may want a test that's sensitive enough to separate the men from the boys. You know what I'm saying? Wait, what is the difference? This is why I didn't go into pediatrics. The mocha is great because it comes in a bunch of different versions in even different languages. And remember, Cherubs, if you can administer a mocha in a different language, please remember to submit your applications for geriatric fellowship to ERAS as soon as- Let's talk a bit about using these tests appropriately. Tests are all about probabilities. You know, sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive values. Your favorites, I know. If you administer a test in an inappropriate situation, you're going to get a garbage result. And don't get me wrong, this is true for all tests. As a brief digression, hemoglobin A1c is one of my favorite tests. If you check a hemoglobin A1c on a patient who just had a large blood transfusion, you'll literally be checking the hemoglobin A1c of someone else's blood. So there are times in which a very useful test can be completely useless. Labeling someone with dementia has a lot of ramifications, so you want to be fairly certain that you're giving your patients a fair chance. As I've said throughout this video, these are all screening tests. They're just supposed to give you a threshold of what's abnormal and what's not. That said, sometimes providers repeat these tests from time to time, say once a year, to monitor for progression. Let's stop and think about that for a second. What does this actually tell you? Let's say that I score a 20 out of 30 on a mocha, and you diagnose me with Alzheimer's dementia, Next year I score an 18 out of 30, the year after that I score a 15 out of 30. Unlike some other assessments that we perform in medicine, this test doesn't directly provide suggestions for management. So what do you gain by administering this repeatedly? I'd say that the pattern of the score may modulate the confidence that you have in your diagnosis. In Alzheimer's disease, we'd expect that I'd have a slow, steady decline of a few points per year. So you can say that my gradual decline is consistent with a pattern of Alzheimer's disease. In contrast, let's say I scored a 20 out of 30, and then the next year, I also scored a 20 out of 30, and the year after that, I still scored a 20 out of 30. Well, that's not consistent with Alzheimer's disease. You might revise your assessment and say that my pattern may be more consistent with something like vascular dementia. Maybe I had a stroke, but I haven't had any new strokes, so my score looks stable. Now let's say I scored a 20, and then the next year I scored a 29. Well, you'd also say that's not really consistent with Alzheimer's disease, or any kind of dementia. Maybe I was delirious, or depressed, or sick, and then I got better. Maybe I wasn't wearing my glasses when the first test was administered. Now let's say I scored a 20, and then in 6 months I score a 3. This is also not consistent with Alzheimer's disease. Maybe I'm acutely ill or delirious. Maybe I've had a stroke recently. Maybe I have Creutzfeldt-Jakob. 
Whew, okay. So I know that was a lot of information, but hopefully that all made sense to you. Any questions? Oh, uh, sure. You can have this clock drawing back. I I'm not particularly attached to it. Wait, you asked me to remember three words?